Welcome to our lecture online. Now here in this example we're going to see the power of this technique of virtual work. When we start rotating members of a system this makes it really easy to calculate the virtual work done and let me show you why. In the linear sense to find the work done we have to multiply via a dot product the force times the small displacement. So this is going to be the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two. But we can also find the rotational equivalent of work done by taking the torque acting on an object and multiplying it via the dot product with the angular displacement. So when we start rotating things, we have an angular displacement, and so we can see that we multiply the torque times the angular displacement via the dot product, or if you want to, you can call it the moment times the angular displacement. So here comes the concept of virtual work when we start rotating things. So we can say that virtual work is equal to the sum of all the torques at all the torques acting on the object from i equals 1 to n multiplied, of course that's a vector quantity, multiplied times a small angular displacement. Or if you like better, you can say that's equal to the sum of all the moments multiplied times the small angular displacement from i equals 1 to n. And if the system is at equilibrium, then we know that that must be equal to zero. And then we can find the reactionary force at, at b with this, this technique rather than the one we used where we had a linear displacement du in the previous example. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's multiply or add up all the products of the torques times the angular displacement and figure out what r sub b is in that particular case. Starting with our reactionary force at a, we can say that the force at a, so reactionary force at a, times the distance, the perpendicular distance, from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, which in this case, that's going to be equal to zero. Of course, this term will then be zero. So the force times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to where the force is acting times the cosine of the angle between the two. Now notice the reactionary force is up, the d theta is up, so that becomes the cosine of zero degrees. But nevertheless, this term will be equal to zero because where the force is acting. Now we have the force here, so we add to that the force times the distance from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, that's the perpendicular distance, which is A, times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the angular displacement, which is 180 degrees. And we add to that the reactionary force at B, multiplied times the distance, the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to where the force is acting, which is L, times the cosine of the angle between, so this is acting upward, this is acting upward, they're both pointing in the same direction, so this will be the cosine of zero degrees. And that, of course, must equal zero because the system is at equilibrium. So this is zero, so here we have the cosine of 180 is minus 1, so this becomes minus F times A, plus here we have the cosine of zero is 1, the reactionary force at B times L equals zero, or RB times L equals A times F, or the reactionary force at B is equal to A divided by L times F, which of course is the very same result we got in the previous video, but we used a different technique here, and you'll find that this technique is very powerful when we start looking at systems that can bend or rotate or act in different ways. We can even uh, use it on trusses and find the forces on the members of a truss. And this is the technique we use to do that.